I am Barbara Diniz and I am an ESA graduate. Um, when I came to ESA four years ago, I had absolutely no idea what art was, and even less of an idea of what it could be. Luckily for me, um, I had no idea what I was doing. So when art opened up to me, I was there to open back up to it. Um, when I started creating, I only focused on things that I felt was important to me. Um, and things that I was most interested in. Art makes me think in this strange and connecting, abstract way of ideas, only caring about what feels genuine and important, and nurturing that and feeding it. And I think that's an idea that we have to bring to everything that we do. I thrived here not because of who I am, but because of who I met and what I surrounded myself with. So for the, fast, for the past two years in my own work, I have been attempting to perceive art, the structure of society, and the mental processes of human beings strictly without explanation, opinion, or perception. In these respects, I do not see myself as an artist, as someone who interprets feelings, or as someone who filters out something. I consider every piece I produce an observation of data, and in contrast to a vehicle for the creation of new data. What I mean is that every work is a reflection on an observation, and its presentation allows cascades of observation and reflection trophics. I'm becoming more and more interested in this idea because I think it reflects a lot of the trophics of energy in our environment, how a singular producer can become um, energy for someone else who is the consumer, and in that turn becomes another producer. In this way, it reflects how our environment cannot create um, energy, but ideas must be, and ideas and energy has to be maintained through other people and observation. That said, um, I strive to make any observations produced by myself to be simplistic in their delivery, so the piece lends understanding to any viewers who ask for it. This is an example of Sort of my last hurrah at ESA, it was my concluding painting, and um, I used it as a mechanism for understanding the past four years of work that I did, and also trying to come to terms with what I have decided. I, right now, am in my first year at U of T Life Science, where I wanted to specialize in biochemistry. So I went from five plus hours of making and creating art, and talking about it, and conceptualizing it with other people, to five plus hours of organic chemistry lab prep. Um, and I was, I was in a room with people who wanted to share and communicate and connect with ideas, analytically and creatively, but now I was, con I was surrounded by people who wanted to be analytical and creative, but also, most importantly, wanted to go to medical school. Um, so that realization hit me pretty strong. Uh, and this is a piece reflecting and observing that. Additionally, I find really interesting is humans' ability to adapt, compromise, and be desensitized um, by what they see. A lot of my work has to do with the relationships between humans and animals, including all the ways in which we are the same. This painting brings in the story of Nebuchadnezzar as we read it in the Bible. Uh, he was a Babylonian, ba Babylonian king who had become too obsessed with power and was sentenced by God to become an animal for seven years so that he would find what it means to survive and what is most important in life. And that was food and shelter and water, but also to be humbled. So this painting also talks about the balances between what I need in life in terms of my being fed and being able to survive, and also what I need as a person, as, as a human being. Um, so uh, a lot of my work also talks about animals and the pursuit of truth. This is a sketch and uh, notes that I did on the backwards of a painting, or on the background of a painting, so that I could try to understand my thoughts. and. The most important thing I think that I've realized as an artist is that art, uh, as a, is that truth is pursued in three ways, and that is the arts, the sciences, and religion. And this painting tried to put them all together uh, in a way that we could universally look at observations and understandings. Um, 
Stanford graduate Mae Jemison, who was a black female astronaut and professional choreographer, uh, once said, science provides an under, a personal understanding of the universal experience, and the arts provide a universal understanding of a personal experience. I think we need to take a step back and read that again. Science provides a personal understanding of a universal experience, and the arts provide a universal understanding of a personal experience. I think this means that we can't survive without one or the other. Albert Einstein said, the most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious. It is the source of all arts and science. Therefore, they are a manifestation of the same thing. Arts and sciences are our attempt to understand, test, and then share that understanding. So what I really want us to understand here is that what we're talking about is not just applicable to the arts. It's applicable to all of humanity. Um, I'm really proud to say that there are artists in boardrooms right now who are being paid to actually draw minutes of these meetings so that they can be better understood. Uh, so art has an extension more than just what we want to say. It's also an easier way of bypassing all of our cognitive defenses. An example, of course, is advertising. This is a WWF campaign um, which tries to draw attention to global warming obviously very impactful. Another example is Ai Weiwei's um, uh, artworks, and this is a sculpture of children's backpacks. Uh, it was on display in the AGO. You can find out more about that. Um, so what I really want to say is how we can think about how TED Talks have, TED Talks have um, shown us these 15 minute change your world conversations. But art has the power to be these 30 seconds, kick you in the face, really want to change your perspective on things, uh, interactions. Ideas are powerful, as I'm sure we all know. Um, and here we are exercising our need to nurture different ideas and what is important to us. Without this ability, we lose what makes us human, and we lose all the powers we ever desire to create, plan, or engender social change in our immediate surroundings or beyond. Thank you.